You've got an interested client and you're ready to hit the ground running. But before you start pounding out code, there's something you need to do first. Lay out a plan. We've narrowed it down to a nine step checklist for you to follow to ensure your project management runs smoother than the highest performing ethernet cord. <laughs> And that's saying something. <laughs> sure, you're eager to start turning out pages, but a website project management plan is crucial to maximizing success and minimizing the chances of failure. Listen, being methodical may sound boring, but it can be life-saving or at least client saving. Now, exactly where do you start in making this plan? If you're not well versed in the ins and outs of the web development project management process, you're not alone. And no worries, we're here to help set you on the right track. Every web development shop is unique and no two designers follow exactly the same process. However, identifying a standard procedure that you can step through over and over again has a lot of benefits. The following checklist is a pretty solid starting point. This checklist is designed to help you and those who work with you stay on track and ensure you don't miss any important steps. You'll always know exactly where you are in the process as well as what lies ahead. Plus, you can expand and refine as you see fit. Now, let's get into it. First, speak to your client to get a general idea of what they want. Turn this into an initial list of objectives that can be discussed or confirmed with the client. This doesn't have to be a 30 page proposal with professional graphics. Ugh, yeesh. A simple list will do at this stage. Here's a partial example. Simply identify the types of users, for example, visitors and registered users. Then specify what visitors can do on the site as well as what registered users can do on the site. Doing something as simple as this will help you set a price for the project and clarify the scope. And if your client balks at the price, yeesh, you haven't wasted a lot of time writing a fancy proposal only to have it rejected. And if the client signs on, you can have further discussions and add greater details to the outline. Your final proposal can still be in list format, just make sure it includes all deliverables and details all functionality. It should also specify what will be delivered and at what point in time. This document is your protection from scope creep, unexpected changes that happen after your project has already begun. Ugh. Step two, sign the contract. Don't start work without money changing hands. Completing all work only to invoice at the end is a recipe for stress and unhappiness. Instead, collect a deposit upfront, then set specific milestones for additional payments. If the project is small, the second milestone might straight up be its completion. If it's large, you might find yourself with multiple milestones. Now that you and the client have agreed on the specs, it's time to lay out what the website will actually look like. This is where the prototype comes in. With a small project, prototyping is completely unnecessary. But on larger deals, you may need to create one. A prototype is basically a non-functional version that allows the client to see what the finished product will look like before you've invested in developing the actual functionality of how it'll work. Often for this, you can get away with wireframes. A wireframe is a layout of a web page that shows what will exist on key pages. This can also help ensure the navigation layout hits on all the user expectations. Wireframes focus on the site's structure and don't have to include design elements or fonts. In either case, prototype or no, you'll want to show the client your design and tweak as necessary. Yeah, that's good, I like that. Once you have your design locked and loaded, you can finally start development. This is where you or your team members put your fingers on the keyboard and really start cranking. Nice. Now's the time to do the following. Set up your development environment, including SSL, install necessary software, obtain graphics and other collateral, create an error handling strategy, create an accessibility strategy, build out the site navigation, add social media links, set up and test contact forms, set up analytics, optimize for SEO, and optimize page load speed. <sighs> Even though you may be elbows deep in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, it's important to pick your head up from time to time and communicate with your client. Otherwise to them, it's like you've just taken their money and disappeared. 
seriously? Instead, make them feel taken care of even while you're head down working. Even a few timely emails would do the trick. Or that. <laughs> now it's time to beta test. This is where you ensure that your work is up to snuff and where you squash any pesky bugs. Things to check include code quality, page content, and user experience. Verify that the site works properly on a variety of devices, not just the one you're currently using. You can use tools to help with this proofing, such as validators and code quality tools, like these. Verify that you have the necessary SEO tweaks in place, such as unique page tiles, appropriate keyword placements, and relevant alt tags. Don't leave any lorem ipsum text behind, and make sure all your images are appropriately optimized. Release the site to the client. Make tweaks if necessary, bask in the glow of your amazed client's appreciation. Most importantly, obtain agreement from your client that you've delivered as promised. Number seven, send that invoice. You've met the objectives, the site is up and running, but you still hold the keys, like hosting information and relevant logins. You don't need to point this out to your client, but you'll know that you still control the site until final payment is received. With payment in hand, you can pass the site over to the client in good faith. This might mean simply handing over the relevant credentials, or it can involve transferring the site from your development server to a live server. If the latter, be sure to run those quality checks again. Make sure all your forms are being sent to the right place, links are working, etc. Yo, get that lorem ipsum text out of here. Finally, remember to always follow up with your client. A successful launch should never be followed by radio silence. Instead, keep in touch with them and make sure they know you're available for future needs. This is the time to send a follow-up survey asking about their satisfaction with the process and the final site. It's also a great moment to grab a testimonial. Maybe one more exclamation point. The nine-step checklist gives a big picture view of the web development project management process. Within each step are multiple tasks that someone needs to complete. Keeping track of what's done and what's on tap is important, especially when you're working with a team. That's where project management tools come in. You can also use The Hub by GoDaddy Pro to help you manage your clients' websites. It's free. They help you set out clear tasks, define specific goals, and keep track of who's working on what. You don't have to be an expert computer scientist in order to successfully run a web project. All you need is a little bit of organization, a good client relationship, and also a little bit of coffee. <sighs> hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like these videos so far, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you know when the next one's coming. Thanks.